Hey, what's up guys? I'm inside my garage right now and I'm about to move this Tesla thing out of it so I actually have some walking room so I can kind of talk and show you guys that Lotus, which is just over there. And to use this Tesla, it's pretty interesting. All you have to do is have this key inside your pocket. You walk up to it and the car is basically on. And if you want to get inside, you just push this button right here. The door opens automatically. Pretty cool. And then you just hop in. <laughs> If you want to close this door, you do not have to go and reach out and pull it. Just come to this middle iPad thing here, push this button down here, door closes, and you are set. But anyway, this is not a Tesla video. Let me just move this thing out, and then we will get to the Lotus content. guys welcome back to another video from corner balance eric here i feel like it's been quite a long time since i uploaded a video and i apologize for the lack of uploads and the hiatus there is a couple of reasons why i haven't really been able to upload anything a few reasons are bullshit so i'll skip those but the main reason why i haven't been uploading is because of this thing behind me the main content device whatever you want to call it uh, has been sucking up a lot of time. Obviously, as you guys can see, it is no longer stock. All the parts that I showed you in the previous video are now on the car. It's ready to go. I actually just took it back from a drive about 15 minutes ago. Um, so today, I'm just gonna bring you up to speed, show you exactly what I've accomplished so far with this car, uh, the kind of transformation that it's come to, and uh, walk you through all the different parts that are now on it. And a second reason why I haven't been uploading, I think, is because the change from the Corolla to the Lotus here was a little bit abrupt. Admittedly, it was done pretty fast, and I think that threw some people off. Um, and I think another reason to that is because some people are just not that into the Lotus. And that's kind of a shame because my whole agenda here is to show people and show you guys what the potential is with these type of cars. I know they're not really the first choices that come to mind for most people. Um, it's definitely a dream car of mine. But aside from that, there's a lot of things you can actually do to take these cars pretty far. And they're really fun to mod, they're really fun to tune. There's a lot of good parts out there available for the Exige and the Elises. Now, although you can just buy it and drive it for these type of cars, and I think that's what most people do, they actually really come into form once you start tweaking it and throwing upgrades at it. So let me go ahead and walk you guys through some of the stuff that I did so far. All right, so I'm not even sure where to exactly begin. I think I'll start with the front. No, I'll go to the back. Let's go to the back. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is gonna be tough. How am I gonna do this? Let me think. Hey, uh, quick interlude. I'm actually out here walking my dog right now, but I'm pleased to announce that there's a new forum for all uh, Lotus people. So if you like a Lotus or you own a Lotus, join this please. It is called www.lotusclub.io. So the link will be right here in front of my face, most likely. Um, so yeah, join it. Please. Actually, let me just start with the things that you cannot see and uh, get that out of the way. So that will include, I think, the suspension stuff. So obviously I got those bill uprights from Elise Parts. Those are now on the car. You can see that there's a dual caliper setup. Oh, get out the way. So there is now a dual caliper setup on this car. As you can see, there's a back. Um, this one right here was my stock front caliper. It is now mounted here. And then this one over here is my stock rear caliper, and this is only converted to handbrake duty only. The, the brake line is taken off, it's been moved to this one. And it's all kind of incorporated in that billet upright in the back. This right here is a two-piece full floating rotor from AP Racing, or it's made in the same factory as AP Racing. These wheels are Lotus Sport 240R cup wheels that I got. And now if I come to the front, same thing. We also have the new uprights installed as well. Obviously all the hubs are changed too. Uh, and instead, up front, I have a 2010 AP Racing OEM caliper from the Exige as well. So the whole point of doing this uh, caliper change, taking my original front calipers and moving it to the back, and then upgrading to the bigger, slightly bigger AP Racing calipers in the front, is to get more of a 50-50 braking bias, because stock, these cars are over-braked in the front, and it doesn't brake very flat. So the best way to change bias is not with a proportioning valve, uh, but the best way to do it is either using a brake cage, or you physically change the braking power front to rear. So you actually add bigger 
calipers in the back, as I did here. So now with this setup, I'm getting much more even braking front and rear, and it's braking a lot more flat, and this thing breaks like a monster. I actually had to step down in pads because I first had Pagged Racing RS14 Blacks, which were basically race pads, and those pads were just way too aggressive for how much braking force this car has now. Before with those pads installed, if I even breathed on the brake pedal, or if I even touched it, the thing would lock up and the ABS lights would come on. It's basically like an on and off switch. Had no modulation, way over braked. I never actually had this problem where you have too much braking, but it's a pretty bad problem. So then I had to step basically two compounds down. I went to some G-Lock, I think they're called RA pads. Much better now, it doesn't just lock up like instantly. So that's what's on the car now. So that is essentially the rundown of the uprights and the brakes and the wheels. So let me actually flip the camera around and kind of show you guys the rest of the stuff. And aside from just the brakes and the new cup wheels, I also have some new R compound Advan AO52 tires installed. These are 255s in the back, 225s in the front. Really gives this car a nice wide stance and kind of fills out the arches. And it looks really good in my opinion versus the stock 225s in the back, I think. I um, also have these LED taillights installed too. These, this is right here, the Reverie uh, Autoclave Diffuser. I think my dog farted because it smells like, dude, did you fart, man? This smells like crap. Okay, since I'm still back here, here's a look at my Arc Ray full titanium exhaust system. Came from Japan. Very light, relatively quiet, uh, and sounds excellent. And of course, this is my decap pipe that comes with my header. That thing is stainless. It's already kind of turning spotty. I don't like that, but it is what it is. And just beyond there is the new header that's also installed. I'll show you guys a picture of that here. And now moving back to the top, this is my Benetech Autoclave wing from Japan. This thing was quite the investment, but I had to take the plunge because this car just needs this wing. It took like two months to make, but then the shipping took literally a day and a half for it to arrive, which was pretty insane. And then I had it shipped directly to a paint shop and I had them paint these stands here, which were aluminum. They used to be just raw aluminum and had those painted flat black, which looks awesome. And now moving to the side of the car, we have the new side skirts that are installed down there. These are done with fiberglass slash plastic approved rift nuts. I think there's eight of them on each side, so it's done properly. It's very secure. There's like a 3M gasketing thing here as well to kind of uh, give it a accent or trim. And now moving to this side, we again have the AP Racing Caliper. I think I already talked about that. Uh, this is the new lip. You guys saw in my previous video how crappy the first lip came out, but uh, the retailer or the vendor kind of came through and they basically remade me another lip by hand to my expectations and this thing is looking very, very nice. You can see that the weave is perfect. The clear coat is not shitty and it's just a good lip, so I'm happy about that. Also installed my tow hook. Steel, never use aluminum tow hooks. I don't know why people do that. Okay, since we're still at the front, let me go ahead and talk about all the work that happened around this clamshell. One of the weeks while I was working on the car, I dropped it off to my local Lotus dealer and had the oil line fitting recall done. So from factory, there are two oil coolers in the front. I think they're on each side and the fittings on them can just break if you do not have the recall done. And obviously that can lead to loss of engine oil and then catastrophic engine damage. So that was uh, accomplished as well. So the oil lines are done. And then I had the entire front clamshell removed and basically installed this Koyo aluminum radiator because the stock radiator has plastic end tanks and of course those can just burst. So now this whole thing is fully aluminum and while installing the radiator, there are some silicone hoses that were installed as well over there. And another interesting detail that I did that most people probably will never ever see is that this black radiator shroud right here that I'm pointing at behind the grill, this thing is actually like a really nicely vacuum infused carbon fiber piece. Uh, so I had that put in while the clamshell was off and you can't even see it if you're looking this close. Like it's kind of dark, so my camera doesn't pick it up, but it is carbon fiber. It's nice. The previous stock one was plastic and it had a crack in it. So I got that replaced. Also clocked the motor for the wiper arm to 12 o'clock because race car. Uh, changed all the lights and bulbs to full LEDs. So there are three LED bulbs in each headlight. This turn signal is LED. Um, obviously the back tail lights are all fully LEDs as well. Also changed the this is going to be a nice segue into the interior, I guess, but I also changed the interior light to LED as well. Uh, so since we're inside, not too much has really changed here. I'm not really fully uh, there yet with the interior. That's the next step, but I did install these 
uh, satin polished aluminum indicators because the stock plastic ones were just some generic ones from like a Vauxhall or something like that. Uh, threw on the Sparco 300 millimeter suede steering wheel. Got the horn button installed as well. Got my work spell hub installed here. This is my work spell GTC flip up hub. I got that in black. Locks very nice. There's no play at all. Super sweet setup. Definitely go work spell if you're doing this stuff. Do not get NRG. Um, horn works as well, of course. Let's see. That's about it for the interior. But while we're in here, let me go ahead and pop the engine bay cover. All right, so not a whole lot to see here either. I mean, I did have the whole car detailed already. Uh, it's been paint corrected as well, so all the swirls are gone. I still need to go back to apply some PPF, some uh, protection film on some of the prone areas for rock chips, and then have the car fully ceramic coated after. So that's still pending. I did get the engine bay detailed as well, so it's looking nice and fresh in here too. Uh, obviously did the oil change to full Amsoil synthetic, changed the transmission fluid as well to Amsoil. And of course, the oil pan is also on. The quantum coilovers are also installed. They ride really nice. So I think that about covers most of what the car has gone through in the past two months. It's been a nonstop, relentless run to get the car to this point today. Um, I'm skipping a few things like, uh, for example, the maintenance. I did the uh, coolant flush. The alignment's also done as well. But another big takeaway is I love the way the car is driving right now. The whole setup, the way the Quantums feel is amazing. They're very supple and compliant for the street, which is super important because too many times, like it's very easy to get a coilover and then have that thing run too stiff or it's just too bumpy or too bouncy for the street. And then obviously every time you go over any type of bump, uh, you break your back or something like that. So uh, the car rides amazing for the street and still very, very um, stiff, I guess, when you need it to be. But yeah, that is pretty much my update for this car. It drives amazing. I cannot stop driving it. If you guys are kind of on the fence about getting an Exige, I say definitely do it. Uh, these cars are really in a class of its own. There's nothing really out there that drives like an Exige. It's a totally weird and bizarre experience. Uh, you're sitting super far inside the cabin. Like you're almost sitting inside the middle when you get into the driver's seat. Obviously there's no sound any, nothing like that. The whole Spartan thing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but yeah, the car drives like none other. It's a unique experience. If you want that raw, analog, I guess, almost race car type of feel, do it. And of course, you also get a roof scoop. Hey, Blue, want a treat? Shake my hand. Shake. Yeah, good boy. Easy. Easy. There you go. Good boy.